welcome to CJ Plus. This is the platform where the citizens choose to speak out amidst the noise of everyday news breaks. This is the place where your stories matter. From across the country and the world this week, the citizens are reaching out to us and CJ Plus is reaching out to them. This week on the show, we're getting you citizens battling flood-like situations in Chennai, sending us their ground reports. Also, a very special CJ Plus report from Paris. Due to the heavy rains, there's water inside my house. Water entered our house while we were still sleeping. Say to the world, we are not afraid. It is in a day such as this one again that those words have um, a meaning for all of us. Last week, the city of Chennai was inundated. Homes were flooded and roads had transformed into streams. The number of rain-related deaths had crossed 85. And even while the news teams were reporting from different parts of the city, you, the citizen, joined the news gathering process. You sent us your videos and pictures to CJ Plus by the hundreds, showing us complete flooding and how a city had come to a standstill. <laughs> Santosh Anand lives in TTK Nagar in Chennai and sends these videos of waterlogged streets right outside his house. In fact, the water has entered his home and other houses in the area. People have to wade through ankle deep water that has stagnated here after the rains. Citizen journalist Jayashri Ramesh sent this picture of a completely flooded Annanagar in Chennai. In fact, traffic in Annanagar couldn't move at all as recorded by citizen journalist Joseph in this video. People living in high rises had to be rescued by boats. Citizen journalist Saket from Govanchari in the outskirts of Chennai sends these pictures of flooding outside apartment complexes. Citizen journalist Vidya shot these pictures in a Shoknagar area of Chennai. She says this was the situation only after two hours of rain. The sewage mixed in this water emanated a reek that residents had to live with. Vidya says that the situation speaks volumes about the quality of drainage system and the responsiveness of authorities. This was the situation at Gudavanchari area in Chennai, a citizen journalist Yashwant sends these pictures showing the extent of flooding in his neighborhood. Yashwant also sends pictures from the SRM University area in Chennai. Sai Ganesh, a citizen journalist, sends us pictures of severe water logging in Perambur in Chennai. Citizen journalist Prashant Ramesh sends us pictures of a completely submerged subway in the city. These videos of inundation in Avari Housing Board, Trivalur district have been sent by citizen journalist V. Ravi. He says that no civic authorities had taken any action even as water had entered into most of the houses. Citizen journalist Divya sends this video of water gushing down the steps of Tirupati walkway. Citizen journalist Jay sent this visual of a swamped bus stuck in Ekatutankal in Chennai. In fact, another citizen journalist, Krishna Kumar, witnessed an empty sea bus flooded with water and took these pictures. These and many, many more videos have reached us through Facebook, Twitter, WhatsApp, and IBNCJ.com. Citizen journalist Aditya has sent us videos from various localities of Chennai. Notice the level of water on the roads in Ashoknagar area in the second video shot by Aditya. 
As Chennai struggled to breathe underwater, the one thing that was clear was that the city was completely unprepared to face the rains. And uh, many volunteer organizations and citizen groups have come out in rescue and relief work. Our partners, World Vision, is one of them. They're now sending their seizure report. Also, we're getting voices of people who've lost everything to the rain. All of these videos have been shot by citizens themselves using their mobile phones. <laughs> I am Joy and uh, I'm here at uh, Ambedkar High Secondary School where uh, we've actually got uh, permission to prepare uh, kits uh, to give people who've been affected uh, by the rains in the last uh, you know, 48 hours. You know, as you know, uh, Chennai has been receiving a lot of rain and a lot of our, uh, the communities where World Vision India works, uh, their homes are all gutted. And uh, so we've identified the worst uh, affected families uh, and we've called them over to give them this uh, hygiene kit. I'll just show you what is inside the hygiene kit. So we have rice, we have mats and we have a uh, uh, hygiene kit. Uh, for, we've been uh, considered about uh, women. Uh, yeah, so yeah, these are the things that we've uh, dry rations basically. This is Joy signing off as CNN IBN uh, citizen journalist here in Chennai. Hello, this is Sumbit from SRM University. Last Monday, like on 16th, the Chennai and SRM University faced a heavy rain due to which uh, the whole Chennai and SRM University was like flooded with water. So water came up to the knees of this. This made uh, very difficult for the students and teachers. So SRM kept uh, holidays for seven days. And the uh, like hostels, hostels nearly submerged in water. Like first floor up to first floor, the water was occupied. So many of the students vacated the hostel and went uh, because of, because of it's a precautionary method and for the safety of the students they vacated the hostel and went to their home Do, and uh, this make uh, water uh, may cause uh, dengue also this was another reason which made uh, them to go to their home and uh, food uh, the food supply was like uh, nearly stopped because of this rain and uh, flood due to the heavy rains there's water inside my house there's no place to even sit inside my children are crying of hunger all our clothes are drenched and we have nothing to wear and nowhere to sleep. It has been raining since last night. By 4 a.m., water entered our house while we were still sleeping. Children's clothes, bags, everything was drowned. Now we have no dry clothes to wear. Our utensils were also washed away. Your videos and pictures and reports, also the ones that didn't make it to the show, are here on our website, ibncj.com. Remember, we've got lots of uh, your videos and pictures, and the CJ Plus digital team verifies these pictures and videos before wetting them. And now to another piece of news, and this one shocked the world. Paris was attacked, and the world is still coming to terms with that support tributes are pouring in on social media the world people across it are showing their solidarity with the city of paris and cj plus team would like to take your attention to this video basically it's a heart-wrenching conversation between a father and the son the father a frenchman himself is trying to tell his son how love flowers are stronger than guns and hatred if you haven't seen that video already which is unlikely because it's been shared 11 million times on facebook but if you want to take a look at it again it's here up on our website ibncj.com yes paris was engulfed in darkness but the lights are not out across the city people are gathering sharing love support and uh, strength a citizen of paris cyril is now turning a citizen journalist and here is his report Thirteen November, horror struck Paris. Terrorists attacked the French capital, leaving more than a hundred killed and more than three hundred injured. A nation was in mourning and the world in shock. In the face of grief, the French citizens showed bravery and unity. This video of football fans streaming out of the Stade de France singing the French national anthem, each of them aware of the horror and chaos unfolding in their city, was a display of the strength of spirit. An 
unknown pianist later identified as David Mortello played a moving rendition of Imagine outside the Bataclan. Resilience resounded and Paris said it was not afraid. Despite the bloodshed, Parisians are taking to the street with a simple message for the terrorists and the world. That love trumps hate. We are not afraid. Don't stay at home. Be out, be outside and uh, uh, say to the world, we are not afraid. As, as, uh, as painful as it is, it is in a day such as this one again that those words have um, a meaning for all of us as a, as a community. And again, this is something that we have to do together. As Our love and support goes out to Paris. You too can send us your tribute as video messages. You can WhatsApp your videos, also tweet or Facebook them to us. Of course, you can also log on to our website, ibncj.com and send your video messages. With that, slipping into a very short break, but lots more of your CJ reports on the other side. Welcome back, you're watching CJ Plus. Now many of you probably know about Gunj. It's a disaster relief project and a well-known non-profit organization in the country. CJ Plus has worked closely with Gunj in the past and with a very heavy heart we report that this Diwali, while the country was celebrating, a center of Gunj in the national capital was burned down, allegedly by a firecracker. Now lots of clothes, blankets, electronics collected over months and to be distributed to the needy have been completely destroyed. Runjun Sharma visited the site of this fire and is speaking to Gunj founder Anshu Gupta for the special CJ appeal. This was the godam for Gunj. The non-profit organization which has provided help and relief for thousands in need. This Diwali in a massive fire that could have been initiated by a firecracker, all was lost. I mean, if you see what, what, all, what all is gone, you know, part of it, you see these water bottles and utensils here. This used to be the washing machine, what you see here. And then this, this portion was for the family kits. Family kits means a whole lot of utensils, you know, and toys and other kind of things. This is a part of the fan, so so lot of lots and lots of electronic items also. All that remains now are burnt brick walls and ash. I mean, imagine just just one cracker must have done this. This is more than 3,000 square feet of space and really really high. You must have seen those marks. So because it was a huge uh, sturdy tin shed. Anshu Gupta found a goonj takes us through everything that was lost in the fire. Clothes, blankets, toys, shoes and many other things that Goonj had collected over months were to be distributed to thousands this winter. No, so I mean if you see the entire volume, I think uh, just, just for the few thousand families for sure, it must have, it, it, it would have gone to the people in Bihar, West Bengal, Uttarakhand, Kashmir, uh, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh. I mean, that's how we operate, and we deal with almost 2,000 tons a year now. It may have been a happy Diwali for many, but for Goonj, this has been a big setback, and perhaps an alarming message for many. We at CNN IBN urge you to contribute and help Goonj in whatever little ways possible. 
विद राजू खत्री इन न्यू डेली आई एम रुंजन शर्मा This is an opportunity for you to give back. Remember to contribute to Gunj. Now, from one campaign to another, and this one is called Pinchada Tor or Break the Cage. This is started by the women students of Delhi University who are speaking out against the sexist rules of the university that is restricting the freedom of women students. <laughs> My name is Devangana Kalita. I am an activist with the Pinjratur movement, and uh, today I am acting as a citizen journalist to talk about the sexist, discriminatory, and restrictive rules and regulations which exist in hostels and PGs across universities in this country. In universities across the country, women's hostels, women's PGs. they have the curfews and deadlines which range anything between 6:30 to could be 10 o'clock at night we are gathered here today sitting outside the central library in north campus delhi university to do what we are saying we are creating the library of our dreams and it's the library of our dreams because we believe that the current university resources such as libraries or sports centers or research labs are not equally accessible to women because they are locked up in their hostels and private accommodations <laughs> After effectively after 7:30 or 8, it becomes an all-male space because of the kind of hostel regulations there are. The university should be a place which facilitates access to knowledge, uh, facilitates thinking. This constant rhetoric of safety, which is constantly thrown at women all the time, to restrict their equal access and right to education. The university has to treat us not as infantile girls, but as adult women who can decide for themselves at what hour they want to go out in the night and negotiate questions of safety on their own. Spaces which try to empower and educate you are actually restricting you. So I have to kind of sacrifice my bit of. freedom to keep the name of the city and safe outside university is not a khap panchayat who will have to listen to the kind of patriarchal logic which families or societies might have university it has to be a democratic space which allows you to experience those rights which are enshrined in your constitutions it's pertinent that women across universities and colleges in this country speak out against these restrictions which seek to regulate us in spaces of higher education devangana kalita citizen journalist cnn ibn give me part your voice is cj plus and we are inviting you to join the news gathering process simple technologies are now connecting you to us use your mobile phone to take a picture or a video simply whatsapp it to us you can also find us on facebook and twitter and of course there's our website ibncj.com that's it then on the show but before we go i got an opportunity to hop on to a hot air balloon this week as a part of taj balloon festival in agra take a look at that and goodbye i'll see you next Week. We are in Agra but you wouldn't believe it looking at the fantastic splash of color against the sky. This is the hot air balloon festival happening here in the city that's going to get us a brand new perspective on the beautiful monument Taj Mahal. Guess what? I am supposed to hop on to a beautiful hot air balloon myself and I am supremely excited for that. At the Hathi Ghats on the banks of Yamuna, giant balloons are being blown up. Vibrant, wacky, and strikingly beautiful, these balloons of 15 teams from countries such as Britain, Spain, Australia, Brazil, and France are participating in the first ever Taj Balloon Festival organized by UP Tourism. Very, very exciting. because this is the flight over on the uh, over the Taj Mahal it's very 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 nice that's my pilot francisco from brazil and he is giving me a ride in his bumblebee balloon and up we go beautiful the morning haze curtains the taj mahal and it was only a lucky few like me for who the taj's silhouette emerged against the rising sun 
This area is usually a no-fly zone. The organizers have taken special permissions for the festival. We've heard that the government has kind of taken a decision after having seen the first two days being so successful that they want to make it an annual affair. If all goes well, Agra should be on the ballooning map of India starting next year. For the locals too, the balloons have generated a lot of interest. As they descend close to the homes and the streets, there's always a crowd ready to greet the riders. You go low over the roofs and you have thousands of people uh, waving. Uh, waving, yes. <laughs> and this is very amazing. You, it's very difficult to, to have a, a similar experience in other parts of the world. As the evening approaches, the balloons transform into twinkling lanterns, leaving the city with images that it would like to cherish forever. In Agra, this is Mekha Mamgen for CNN IBM.